In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a question I showed you in the previous video that we didn't work out. So if you'd want to see that, you can follow the link in the description or you can check, follow the link that is right here. Okay, so before we get any further, let's see what the question is asking us to determine. So in this case, they're saying that knowing that the tension in uh, the tension is 425 pounds in the cable AB and 510 pounds in the cable AC, Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the forces exerted at A by the two cables. So you have two cables. One cable is running from A to B, and then the other cable is running from A to C. And then we are told what the tension in each cable is. So we want to determine what the resultant force will be that they are exerting at the point A. Well, there are two methods we can use. We can use the angles to determine what the forces will be, or what the resultant force will be. But in this case, we're going to be using the direction of vectors, that expression which I showed you guys in the previous video, where we said we're just going to express each force in Cartesian uh, vector form, where we just multiply the coordinate, uh, the magnitude of the vector, by the unit vector pointing in the respective direction. So this is going to help us express each force as a vector or in Cartesian coordinate form. So let's see what we have to do. Well, we have two forces, and if you look at the question, the forces are just given as magnitude. So now we want to express these forces in Cartesian vector form. Once we can, once we express them in Cartesian uh, vector form, then we'll be able to add the x components, the y components, and the z components respectively, so that we get what the resultant will be. So let's see, how do we actually get to do that? Well, let's start with the vector running from A to B. So let's, the first thing that we want to do is to determine the position vector running from A to B. So let's label that position vector as R A to B. So in this case, let's see what we have to do. Well, we're starting from A. Notice that the first step that you have to do is to move from A. First, follow the coordinate axis that they're describing. Here they're saying that the vertical is the Y axis. The one coming this side is the Z axis. And the one going this side, this is the x-axis. So you have to stick with what they're giving you. So if you, if I was to just move this so that the origin gets to the point where we're starting from, let's see what we actually have to do in terms of displacement. So we notice that the position vector, when we start from A, we go down. So along the y-axis, we're going down. So this displacement will have to be a downward one, a negative one. And then from there, we move from this point coming to O. So this is parallel to the x-axis or along the x-axis. We see that we're going in the positive x. So this is going to be positive. And the next one, now we move parallel to the z-axis until when we reach B. So this is going to be a positive one again because it is heading in the positive z-axis. So because of that, when writing this, um, this position or the position of our vector uh, AB, so let's start with the x. So for the x, we see that we're heading in the positive x. And when you look at this part here, the description of the magnitude of this part is given this side from this all the way up to the y-axis. This is labeled as a 40 inch. So I can get that still in inches, and that is a 40. We're heading in the positive i direction, so I'll keep it positive. The next thing that we want to see is in the y-axis. The y-axis, according to our question, the y-axis is the vertical. So if you look at our vertical, we were going downwards. In the description, how far down we went is given this side. So this is given as 45 inch. So because of that, it's going to be negative because we're heading down. It's going to be negative 45 in the j direction. The last one is in the z-axis, and this is described this side. So we're heading in the positive z, and the magnitude, how far we have to go, is given this side. So notice that this is the same as just from or to be. So because of that, we're going to take that side as a 60 inch and it will be positive. So we have positive 60 inch and this is in the k direction. So if you need the units, of course, you can put the brackets and then have the inches there. But for now, let's leave them like that because this is not our goal. So the next thing that we need is the magnitude. What we're trying to get here is we're trying to use the position vector or the vector running from A to B. We're trying to use this vector to determine a unit vector that is pointing in the direction of A to B. Once we have that unit vector, then we can use it 
in the expression that I wrote earlier on to determine what the vector will be, what the force vector will be pointing from A to B. To get the magnitude, of course, we already have uh, what the vector is. So this is going to be 40 squared, then plus minus 45 squared, then plus the 60 squared. So this is what we're going to do. And if we do the math here, the magnitude comes out as this is going to be 85. So the magnitude here comes out as 85. Once we've determined what the magnitude is, the next thing that we need now is to get the unit vector that points in the direction A to B. And remember, this is given by the vector itself divided by the magnitude of that vector. So this is how we get the unit vector. So of course, our vector is 40i minus 45j plus 60k. Then we're dividing this by the magnitude, which is 85. So from here, our unit vector becomes 40 over 85 i minus 45 over 85 j, then plus 60 over 85. Okay, so we can simplify this. So for each one, we see that when this simplifies, we can divide everything through by 5. So this becomes 8 over 17 i minus, and the next one becomes 9 over 17 in the j, then plus, and the last one becomes 12 over 17 in the k direction. So we now have our unit vector. So since we know what the force uh, from A to B, this is just the magnitude of the force, this force is given to us as 425, and this is in pounds. So the unit vector, we know what the unit vector is from A to B, so we can now get the force vector. So the force vector F will be given by the magnitude of the force multiplying the unit vector pointing in the direction of that force. So in this case, our force vector is 425. So we're going to have our 425 here. Don't forget the units we used were the pounds, so keep that in mind. So for the unit vector, remember we reduced it to 8 over 17 i minus 9 over 17 j then plus 12 over 17 k. So when we multiply here, this reduces to become the first, the first term. This will be 200 in the i direction. Then minus the next product will be 225 in the j direction. Then the last term becomes 300 in the k direction. So this, so this becomes the force vector. Now notice that the force vector is just a combination of the magnitude that we are given, the 425, and a unit vector pointing in the same direction as that force, which is from A to B. So now we can do the same thing. So this is the force pointing from A to B. So now let's look at the force running from A to C. So where is that? So from A to C, we're now looking at from A, which is here, going all the way up to C, which is down here. So for this one, let's see what we have to do. Well, if we try to do the same thing, notice that in the y-axis, don't forget the y is to the vertical, in the y-axis, we have to go down. So this is going to be our displacement in the y. It will still be negative because we're going down. And then in the x-axis, which is this line, in the x-axis, we have to go along the positive x. So for this one, we're going to head in that direction. Then lastly, in the z-axis, we have to move from O, uh, sorry. In the x, we're not ending at O. We continue all the way up to D since we are coming to C. So for this one, we're starting from this point, going all the way until when we reach D. So notice that for this one, we're going to have the 40, which is on top here. Apart from this 40, we're going to have the 60, which is from here to here, from O to D, it's given as 60. So all together, from this point, all the way up to D, that is going to be a 100 inch. So I hope you keep that in mind. So the other thing that we're going to do here, so we've reached up to D. So the last step will now be to move from D so that we reach our point C. So this is going to be the last piece. Now let's put them down. So of course, from this point in the X-axis all the way up to D, we're heading towards the positive x, so this is going to be positive. 
And then from D to C now, we're heading towards the positive Z, so it's going to be positive. The only one negative is in the Y again where we had to go down. So let's see how it goes. In the, let me write it here. So moving from A to C, first in the X, in the X we're heading towards the positive X, so this is positive. We had to do the 40 first, then the 60. So altogether we had to move 100 inch in the I direction. But in the Y axis, we had to go down, so the negative there, then we had to go down by 40 inches. So that is going to be negative 40 in the Y axis. Then in the Z axis, we're going towards the positive Z, so that's positive, and we're still covering a 60 inch. So this is positive 60 inch in the K direction. So this becomes the position vector running from A to C. Now let's get it and let's go the other side and see what we can do with it. The next thing that we need, we need now a unit vector pointing from A to C. Since we already have the displacement vector, we can get its magnitude, RISE. To get the magnitude of this, of course, just the square root of the 100 squared plus the minus 40, but squared, plus the 60 squared. So be very careful. Most students, when squaring a negative term here, they tend to punch it on the calculator without the brackets. If you do that, or sometimes you correctly put the brackets with the negative inside, but you square, you put the square inside as well. What your calculator will do is it will, it will square the 40 on its own, but not the negative. That will have an effect on your answer. So correctly written, this has to be negative 40 and then the square outside. So even the negative is squared. So from here, if you evaluate this, the magnitude comes out as 125. So this will be the magnitude. Now that we have the magnitude, we can get the unit vector from A to C, and this will be the vector from A to C divided by its magnitude from A to C. So of course, this is going to be 100 over 125 in the I minus 40 over 125 in the J plus 60 over 125 in the K direction. This can simplify, or we can take it the way it is, we'll simplify later. So that the force vector now running from A to C will be equal to the force running from A to C, the magnitude, multiplying a unit vector running from A to C. So we have the unit vector, we have the force. In the question from A to C, the question said, where is our question? The question said from A to C, so A to C we had a 510 pounds. So we can use that 510 pounds. Then we're multiplying this by the unit vector. And the unit vector is 100 over 125 in the I minus 40 over 125 in the J plus 60 over 125 in the K axis. From here, we can multiply this. And what we get for the first term, we'll get 408 in the I minus, we multiply the second one, we get 183.6 in the J, and the last one becomes 244.8 in the K direction. So now that we have the force, let's see each term down. So we have the force from A to C, and then earlier we got the force from A to B. And that force from A to B, we had 200 in the I minus 222, 225 in the J, and then we had 300 in the K direction. So to get the resultant force now, the resultant, we just have to add them. In the I, of course, we'll add the like for like. In the I direction, we have 400, 408 plus 200. This is in the I. And then in the X, in the, in, the, in the J, I mean, so in the J, notice that both these terms are negative. So let, let me say plus. We can say plus. Now we're going to have negative 183.6. Then minus 225. Uh, uh, this is all in the J direction. Then the last one is these in the K and both are positive. So you have 244.8. Then you can say plus the 300. And this is in the k direction. So if we simplify this, 
for the first term in the i, we're going to get 608 in the i. Then this, both are negative, so we're going to have minus here. And these will add up just in the negative sense. And this is going to be 408.6 in the j. Then lastly, plus 544.8. This is in the k direction. So we have the resultant. The next thing that we can do is to get the magnitude of the resultant. This is a, Here the resultant is expressed in Cartesian vector form. So this is the x component of the resultant, the y component of the resultant, and the z component of our resultant. So we can get the magnitude of the resultant. The magnitude of f of our resultant will be given by the square root of 608 squared plus negative 408.6 squared, then plus 544.8 squared. So this is going to give us the magnitude. I've just squared each component and then summing them. Of course, getting the square root afterwards. So if we do this, the magnitude of our resultant is going to come out as 912.9. And remember, the forces were given in pounds, so this magnitude is also in pounds. So the question was asking us to, to get two things. One, the magnitude of the resultant, uh, resultant force acting at A. And the second thing was the direction. So we have the magnitude. Now, how do we get the direction? Well, you have to remember what we did earlier on, the directional angles. If you remember, the first video that we did was if we're going to get the directional angles, then for the angle between the x-axis and the vector is alpha, and cos alpha will be equal to the x component of the force divided by the force itself, which is the resultant in this case. And then if you do this, we already have the x component. We'll get the x component from the Cartesian vector form of our resultant, which is 608. So this becomes cos alpha is equal to 608 divided by the magnitude of the resultant, which is 912.9. So 912.9. So from here, alpha will be equal to cos inverse of 608.912 uh, uh, divided by 912.9. So if we do this, alpha comes out as 48.24 degrees. So this becomes the angle you have to move from the x-axis until when you reach the vector. How about from the y-axis. From the y-axis, remember, cos beta, so beta is the angle between the y-axis and the vector we're dealing with. Now this is going to be the y-component divided by the vector itself. In this case, it is our resultant again, so that the angle beta will just be cos, alpha, cos inverse of the y-component. Again, the y-component will get it from the Cartesian vector form, and see this? This component is negative. So we're going to have negative 408.6 divided by the magnitude 9112.9. Doing this, beta comes out as 116.6 degrees. And lastly, we can do the same thing for gamma. And for gamma, we had cos gamma equal to the z component divided by the vector itself. And gamma comes out as cos inverse, the z component. We have positive 544.8. That's 544.8 divided by 912.9. So doing this, we get gamma as 53.36 degrees. So now that we've done this, so we've obtained the directional angles which state the direction of this vector, this resultant, and we've also obtained the magnitude of the resultant vector. Now guys, hope you are able to, to follow through. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial.